Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be going over the advanced rules for Dragon Prince Battle Charged as well as go over playing games with more than just two players. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed the video. So hello, this is the second part to our Dragon Prince series. Now we are going to be going over a couple of different options to play the game and these options actually add some really fun and interesting ways that really kind of spice up the gameplay. If you have played the basic game a couple of times and you're looking for something even more strategic, this is a perfect way to add that strategy into your games. I would also recommend watching my how to play video, which will be linked in the description down below, as well as should appear above my head any second now. Now with that rules video, I went ahead and described how to get started and get right into your first two player game. With this video, I'm gonna go over how to play with more than just two players and what the rules are with that. The easiest way to describe it would be that if you ever have an odd number of players, there's always going to be a player that's going to be controlling two miniatures throughout the game. The player controlling two heroes will move and attack with both of their heroes on a single turn. Now, any player that's controlling just one miniature will always have a hand size of four cards. And any character that has to control two heroes will always have a hand of seven cards. Now, when taking turns as each team, in games of three to five players, all players on the same team will take their turns clockwise, and then the next team will take their turns in clockwise order. In games with six players, you are encouraged to alternate between teammates on opposing teams, meaning that one player from purple will take a move, then one player from red, then one player from purple, and continue that same order clockwise around the table. Now the last thing that makes five and six player games special is that you actually need to grab seven victory coins because it is the first team to four victory coins that wins the game. Now let's go ahead and dive into the advanced rules that are provided within the game. The first one is called a zone of control. This is essentially the ring of squares around a player, both orthogonal and diagonal. Now, every single hero, even those that are knocked out, will exert this zone of control surrounding their player piece. However, these zones of control do not extend through walls. Now, when an enemy moves into a player's zone of control, they must stop their movement right there. Now, if a hero begins their turn in a player's zone of control, they can move freely within the zone of control. But if you leave the zone of control and try to re-enter, you will have to stop your movement again. Now, if a player is using jump movement, then they may ignore all the rules regarding a zone of control for enemies, as well as they can move through their enemies with their movement. Heroes can still move through their allies with regular movement, but they are not able to move through their opponents unless they are beginning their turn within their opponent's zone of control. Now, what does this add to the game? This actually adds a lot of interesting positioning within the game. You can essentially block opponents from rushing across the map. This really restricts the movement and makes movement more tactical and more interesting and gives a little bit more urgency to where you're positioning your pieces and how exactly you can get from point A to point B or how you can block your opponent from getting from point A to point B. And now we are moving on to advanced rule number two, which is surrounding line of sight. This makes it so that enemies actually block line of sight. The other cool characteristic of this is that characters adjacent to blocking terrain create solid barriers to line of sight. So for example, in this case, Callum could not attack Claudia because Soren is up against that wall and that creates a barrier against all line of sight. This works just the same with two characters. Having them both in a line will block all line of sight, trying to make its way between there and through there. 
Now adding this rule in is very, very fun because it really gives the game a more thematic feel. This is actually how combat would more so work. And it really helps because you can actually use your tank hero Soren in order to protect Claudia, which is very thematic and it's very fun and engaging during gameplay. Now, I really hope that you enjoyed some of these advanced rules as well as going over for playing with more players. Now that you have watched the how to play and you have watched all of the advanced rules, the only thing left to watch are these strategy guides. Now, I will have links down below when those are released, so go ahead and check right now because they might be there already. But that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and drop the beat. Thank you.